Welcome to LSB Feaster's radio channel and travel corner where our mission in life is keeping great radio from the past alive. And today we're going to Philadelphia and WIFI, Wi-Fi 92 and High Lit. In Philadelphia, there is one name that stands out with the dawn of rock and roll and that name is High Lit. Heisky was the man who brought rock and roll to the Delaware Valley and played it uptown, downtown, cross town, here, there, and almost everywhere. High Lip began as an overnight sensation on WHAT in Philadelphia and WRCV radio. And then he landed at Wibbage in the 1950s and became huge. Massive ratings. He had an unbelievable 71% of the radio audience at one time in the 1950s. He did hops all over the place. If there was an appearance, he was there. He made it to TV, went on to WDAS-FM, Wi-Fi 92, 104.5 WSNI in Philly, and 1540 WRCP, as well as 98 WOGL. And after being on the air in Philadelphia for a half a century, Heisky went on to pioneer broadcasting on the internet at his website, highlitradio.com. Sadly, Hi passed away November 17th, 2007. Hey, if you like what you hear, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel too. And after you do, smack that bell. And you will be notified whenever we post anything new. All right, let's go back to 1973 with Heisky O'Rooney McVoudy Ozoot Hylet on Wi Fi 92, Philadelphia. What's the difference? The difference is Penn Electronic Stereo Center has the lowest prices. You can find a Penn Electronic Stereo Center on North York Road in Hatboro, next to the Hatboro Movie, and on Frankfurt Avenue in Bridge Street, right across from the L. Penn Electronic Stereo Centers with really low prices. You'll probably walk out of Penn Electronic Stereo Centers paying less for more than any other store you know. Get to know that name, Penn Electronic Stereo Center. Get to know Penn Electronic Stereo Centers locations. North York Road in Hatboro, next to the Hatboro Movie. Frankfurt and Bridge Streets, next to the L Terminal. Stop in. Listen to Stereo Equipment by Moran Sansway. Pioneer Duel. Penn Electronic Stereo Centers for really low prices and the finest in stereo equipment. See Penn Electronics ad in today's bulletin. And by the way, you can pick up your Wi-Fi boogie bumper sticker at all Penn Electronics stereo centers. Looking for good times, good people, and a good club? Dick Lee's South Jersey's number one dance spot, right over the Walt Whitman Bridge, Route 130 South. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday's new cover nights. Dick Lee's has live entertainment Tuesday through Sunday. This week, the girls are back. The fabulous Lewis explosion. How do you get to Dick Lee's? Take the Walt Whitman Bridge, Route 130 South Jersey. Dick Lee's, South Jersey's number one dance spot, is open at 3 in the morning. Remember this, all week long, the all-girl Lewis explosion. That's Dick Lee's. So far, Wi-Fi has given away $1,000 cash prize, boogie shirts, hundreds and hundreds of items, customized Volkswagen Superbug, a six-pack of Hondas. But wait, it's not over yet. In fact, it's only getting started. Now, how would you like to win a 1973 Volkswagen Boogie Bus? All you do is pick up the all-new multicolored boogie bumper sticker at all 7-Eleven stores in the greater Philadelphia area. Display it on your car and listen to Wi-Fi 92 for your license plate number to be called. If you hear it, call in and win a valuable prize. Winners will automatically become eligible for the grand prize drawing of a 1973 Volkswagen Boogie Bus. 92 Days of Fun is in full swing on WIFI. <laughs> It's 9.45 at Wi-Fi 92 with Hyman. 9.43 in the Brighton. Here's a classic. Music to steam the soul. The Tuppums. WIFI, this is Scott Hill at the Philadelphia Report. The U.S. Third Circuit Court of Appeals in Philadelphia has reinstated a one and one quarter million dollar invasion of privacy suit that had been filed against the makers of the movie Woodstock. The plaintiff, Thomas Tackert, claims he suffered mental anguish, embarrassment, public ridicule, and invasion of his right to privacy by scenes in which the filmmakers engaged him in conversation while he was cleaning latrines. Tackett was an employee of the 1969 Music Festival. His suit originally was thrown out by the U.S. District Court in Newark, but the Third Circuit Court yesterday ordered that Tackett's complaint be 
heard by a jury. The scene in which Tanker was shown ran about two minutes and was cited by some film critics as one of the funniest in the movie. The budget crisis closes out its second week today with no settlement in sight. A tentative agreement has been reached this morning between the state and Borkinus for some 8,000 striking welfare workers. The liquor strike continues today as more state stores expect to be shut down by the striking retail clerks. A measure aimed at curbing abortions in Pennsylvania has reappeared in Harrisburg. A former Philadelphia city councilman has been indicted for alleged perjury. The veterans of foreign wars who were staunch supporters of Nixon's war policy but now oppose the president on the issue of impounding of funds to veterans' hospitals. The VFW meeting in Pittsburgh for its annual convention will also discuss amnesty and preferential employment for veterans during its four-day meeting. Reputed mobster Nicholas Nicky Nut Mussolino is spending his first day in jail today as a convicted killer. A Sullivan County Court jury last night convicted the 22-year-old Manhattan man of murder and attempted murder stemming from the slaying of another reputed gangster last August. Police in Chicago have captured a southern man who had been sought in a series of kidnappings. Police say 25-year-old Richard Masary was seized after a high-speed 15-mile chase on Chicago's west side. Police say the man is in a west side hospital in fear condition, with injuries suffered when a car he was driving crashed. Following the crash, he reportedly fled on foot. Franklin County officials say the man was wanted for kidnapping four persons in four days. His fourth victim, a 34-year-old woman, escaped during the night. She reportedly had been held captive since Tuesday night. American planes attacked insurgent positions again today in support of Cambodian forces. U.S. F-111 and F-4 jet fighter bombers concentrated their attacks in the vicinity of two small bridges at the junction of Highway 3 and Route 38 several miles outside the capital city of Phnom Penh. In South Vietnam, a U.S. search team is investigating the wreckage of an American helicopter missing for six years. They found the remains of several U.S. servicemen in it. The dollar slumped to get an early European trading today, ending a two-day recovery of the American money from record lows. Dealers claim the cause of the dollar's poor showing so far today is the lack of determined support from government banks, including the U.S. Federal Reserve System. Traders note that Federal Reserve support buying has been more of a symbolic effect than anything else, and the French and German banks have brought only small amounts of dollars to boast of the raid. That's despite the fact that state bankers' meeting in Switzerland last weekend had forecast forthright action in defense of the American currency. A fire was burning out of control early today at the U.S. Military Personnel Records Center in Overland, Missouri. The building contains the records of more than 26 million current and past armed services members. Former Attorney General John Mitchell faces a third round of questioning by the Senate Watergate Committee today. He has testified that he withheld facts of the Watergate scandal from President Nixon. He acknowledged yesterday that by doing this, he probably ignored his duties as a lawyer and former head of the Justice Department. Mitchell will be followed by White House Special Counsel Richard Moore. Sources on the committee staff say Moore told them about a meeting last February with former White House aides. Payment of money to the original Watergate defendants reportedly was discussed at the meeting. However, the sources did not reveal what the payments would have been for. Debate continues today on a farm bill that would set a level of guaranteed income for farmers by setting target prices on wheat, corn, and cotton. Yesterday, compromise collapsed when the House refused to remove an escalator clause from the proposed target price system. A Massachusetts resident went a bit to extremes in his protest of the rise in food prices. He called the radio station in Framingham, complaining about the high cost of food, and said he broke into a local diner where he cooked himself some bacon and eggs. Police later confirmed that the diner had been broken into...